Hello, 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 this thing, hello, hello. Hello, hello.
அவர் வர நேரத்துல வந்துட்டாங்களா வந்துட்டாங்கல்ல வந்துட்டாங்கன்னா உடனே ஸ்டார்ட் பண்ணிடுவாங்க 
Okay, okay. Clean up the melody of the ball. I will keep it in the guitar. I tell you. I'm not going to put it on that. I'm not going to ஒரு வீடியோ தான் அந்த வீடியோ மட்டும் தானே Kindly please maintain the decorum. Thank you. 
A very pleasant evening to everyone gathered here. The PG Research and Department of Commerce, Centers of College Trichy, is extremely delighted and proud to welcome you all for this special environment lecture in honor of retired professors of commerce. The Department of Commerce possesses a long-standing tradition to organize environment lecture each year as a mark of valuing the noble service rendered by the former professors of commerce in their presence. The prime objective of conducting this enrollment lecture is to explore and learn the recent developments in women of commerce and management studies. Eminent academicians, industrial civil servants, and many prominent alumni have made their relevant presence as a chief guest during this occasion. This year, it has become more even special as the Department of Commerce celebrates its jubilee year, namely 75 years of commerce shift one and 50 years of commerce shift two. And this year, we have Dr. Zeeman Brito, our illustrious alumnus and chairman, Kerry Indian Logistics Private Limited, Chennai. He is going to interact with us on this topic, logistics shaping future business and making India growing towards fine training economy to become third world economic superpower. Let us proceed into the important event with our general improvement. Further is the initial activity. So we will go to the beginning of the analysis. I am going to start with the analysis. I want to be coming to the third. I'm going to go to the next one. 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 I
First of all, to kindly be seated. Determination and love is nothing without dedication and hard work. Every thought you produce, anything you say, any action you do, it bears your signature. You're delighted with your heart, such an eminent and an intellectual personality, Dr. F.R. Alexander Perundra, Associate Professor and Head, Department of Commerce, and I invite you to welcome the gathering. I now welcome Dr. Ajay Alexander Kalindaran from the Department of Commerce to welcome the gathering. Good afternoon, everybody. The respected chief guest of the day, Dr. Zegi Brito. Our illustrious alumnus, Chairman Kerry Indow, Logistics Private Limited, Chennai, our respected Reverend Dr. T. Amal S.J., our beloved secretary, the Dean School of Management Studies, Dr. Julius Caesar, respected retired father and professor seated on the dais, my beloved. Dr. Arika Rajashekar, one of the organizing secretaries, professors of Commerce Department of St. George's College, professors from other departments, and industrious alumni who are attending this function, and team members of our chief guest, and my dear beloved students of Commerce and Allied Departments. I deem it a great, great pleasure to stand before you on this very, very auspicious occasion of Jubilee Year Special Endowment Lecture in honor of the retired professors of Commerce Department. I said it, I deem it a great privilege for two reasons. One is this is a platinum jubilee celebrations for the morning shift. That is, we call it a shift one. And golden jubilee celebrations for shift two. It so happened, there is a coincidence, we will have both on 2023-24. This is my first joy. It's a joy of everybody here in this department during this time. And the other one is, uh, we have successfully made it to get Dr. Xavier Brito here on this day, at this hour, on the dais. We worked for three months to get Mr. Brito here because when we saw the resume, we were, it was very So that is a second big achievement of the day. So this endowment lecture is organized to honor our retired professors. And we met many of the professors who handled the classes for our chief guests. And we went personally to invite them on. Of course, due to age factor, they could not make it, but we honored them. In the, you can see it on that uh, video. 
they are done, so we are with them. They were uh, talking about their golden time here, and uh, some of them knew our uh, chief guest also because uh, Dr. Victor Luis Antoine subsequently worked in uh, Liba, so now uh, he knows uh, very fondly recalled that. And then we met uh, for Professor Anthony Sandy. I uh, will handle the classes for you. He also asked us to convey his wishes to you. And then uh, uh, Father Francis Wallopoli, a well-known man in this part of the country. So we also tried to get him, again, due to advanced age, we, he conveyed his wishes. And uh, there are other professors, many professors, who could not uh, make it do other engagement. One is in uh, another country, another one is slightly indisposed. In spite of that, to represent all the retiring fathers and professors, we are here for the uh, and Dr. Joseph Xavier. So we, when I went to Bondi, in spite of the busy schedule, they are here. Anything you approach, to get them, yes. That is the speciality of the present administration, particularly Reverend Father Secretary. Whatever we go and ask, we ask for a smart board, then they will got them, yes. Whatever facilities you ask, a lot of changes are happening. We have got one of the best administrative team at the moment administering the whole institution. Reverend Father Paul Dose Michael, Rector, Reverend Dr. Amal Secretary, Reverend Dr. Arakas and Xavier, this institution is blessed. We have got the visionaries, three visionaries together at the same time is really a blessing for this institution. This institution, women blessed, and one of them is representing all of them here, the former rector of Lola College, former superior of Arimandir College, and uh, we have here Father uh, Dr. Amit S.J., who is also welcome to our chief guest on behalf of all the staff and students on this glorious day. Very warm day. We welcome you, Father. Welcome, Father. Uh, we welcome our own professor, Dr. Julius Caesar, who is the Dean School of Management. Welcome, Professor. Of course, we have here uh, Dr. Rajashekar, the man behind uh, the entire show of today. It is one secret we want to tell you. It is through this professor only. We got the phone number of the chief guest and the rest of the things more fast. And only if you had that uh, secret, and uh, that number uh, till date remains secret, we won't uh, share with anybody, sir. That is the assurance. Thank you, Rajashekar, and we welcome Dr. Rajashekar here. Uh, we have got an excellent team of working committee members. Reverend Father Berkmans, Dr. Bastin Jerome, Anthony J. Raja, Francis Vijay Kumar, Arun Das, Kirba Karan, I hope I not missed out any then the other women in process. They worked that this program was success. Back to back, we had the two programs. So on 6th, we had national debate. 41 teams across India represented. We were all witnessing it. This event was conducted at five venues. Because of the large number of representation, and the first prize was won by a medical college from Kerala, Amala Medical College. Second prize was won by uh, St. Philomena's College, Mysore. And third prize was won by Azim Bangalore and Kaveri College, Tuchi. And last prize was won by Sacred Heart College, Tavar uh, Kochi. And there were representation from Andhra, Telangana, Meghalaya, Pandit, a huge function. We were exhausted, but because we have a very special guest, with that, all the energies, we were coordinating with the team of our chief guest, and we are conducting it very successfully. I am very afraid of talking about our chief guest, because we are going to present a video. I, if I give some data which goes wrong, we should be immediately 
I don't get into the particular aspect. But one thing, they have got offices in 65 countries. More than 360 offices, 48,000 employees. I am not able to understand the magnitude of the achievements of our chief guest. You will get to know about it. But I am not going to talk about that achievement. I mean to rest of the others. When we met the sir in Chennai, I was saying that I hailed from a, I hailed from a remote village. How I struggled. How I become what I am today. How people insulted, slighted, how I didn't mind and how I achieved everything. How I became a film therapist. Uh, it, it was, a, it was a, a very emotional experience for all of us. How much is vanity? Learning is one thing, one factor, but giving to others, giving back to the society is an entirely different one. Very few industrialists in India do that. I tell you honestly, I, I can tell you as in Premji, we when we talk about it, when we hear you, I think you are in that league. It's quite common in foreign countries. Whatever they earn, 50%, 25% they give. But this is not in the in the culture of India. But I am very proud of Sarah studied here in St. Joseph's and he has become such a big philanthropist and very, very proud. Then, keeping the roots, where, whichever height you go, keeping the roots till date, respecting the elders. Our chief just said recently I took my whole family, immediate family members, distant family members, to the Holy Land. Then I changed, I took them to Europe, I took them to different churches, I spent my time with them. They, I waited by three, three months, so you can understand how busy he is. But he gave my time for his own family members. He wanted to uh, uh, do many things for his village. That time only I got to know the father Levi. He has done a lot of miracles. And I got to know how much has been done to achieve this for this particular father. He is known and, and he says so many things. He has been uh, uh, reconstructing the whole world of the church. Many things I cannot list it out. I was to become another chief guest. The one thing I say that the department is very much proud of you, sir. I want every MOP to don't mind, please stand up and give a big round of applause as a standing ovation. With that, I will complete. Thank you, everyone. I welcome all the media members here. I welcome everyone who has not left out. It is not intentional. Welcome you once again. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Your work set a positive tone for the program. Your eloquence and enthusiasm, coupled with the pride expressed in our esteemed administrator, alumnus, and former princess, added more inspiration to this program. Once again, thank you, sir. Now, I invite Reverend Father Secretary to honor our esteemed chief guest, Dr. Xavier Bruto, by adorning the shawl and giving the money to you. Thank you, Father. Now I invite the Reverend Father, Reverend Dr. Okar Alexander Kalindi, to honor the most important people in this world. Thank you, sir. 
Now, I invite Reverend Father Benjamin to ask you for the John Bosco, Tyler Professor, and the Community College. Thank you, sir. Father. Now I invite Dr. Peter Alexander Professor, Dr. Joseph Zayu, former Associate Professor of Commerce by Adelaide Michel. Thank you, sir. Now, I accordingly invite Dr. Francis Vijay Kumar to honor a notable alumna, Mr. Sandy Chattel Accountant, Mr. Shah. Thank you, fathers and professors. The, the pessimist complains about the wind. The optimist expects it to change. The leader adjusts the same. Now, I invite Reverend Dr. K. Amal S.J., a building secretary, to share his words with us. Good afternoon and good evening to everyone. I do need a great privilege and honor. And I stand before you with a sense of joy to welcome and offer his very ability to meet us along with his friends in the company of all the professors and my dear beloved students along with the former teaching faculty members, Father Dr. John Bosco and Professor Joseph Xavier. As the University was introducing our chief guest, I was almost got into the shoes of uh, for the Xavier students, I do not know how. If they were to be here, they will be rejoicing and they will be thanking God Almighty, the quality and profusely relentlessly. He is very pleased. Among the children in the family, Dr. Brinkley and myself, I was fortunate, I hope he is also fortunate, that we were together in the same hostel. And we knew that we were and where we are today. We started from very humble and scratch, and I know Dr. Brinkley was a kind of all-rounder, very naughty person. A sense of humor and wit is part of him. At the same time, he would constantly be at his grave. That is the beauty of this person. He would be his friends. He will be kinds of things in the hostel. He will be all the education competition. And he comes with a great medal. Not only he, he is very nervous, very good. And much more than he, he will be very good. Look, I was a junior again. He was a senior, I admired him. Immensely. 
And all the three of them, which is the competition they go, and send you to college again to get a gold medal, a golden cup. No, that is a type of uh, personality, Dr. Bates, and he is a mixed as, and you will see him there once again in the document, how he has grown. Not only he, but along with him, there are families benefited and has been in this company, and he made sure that all, all of them as a team grew together, grew together even today. He is considered as one of the top class enterprise, uh, entrepreneurs, I mean, entrepreneurs, entrepreneurs in our country, and particularly in the southern part of India. And he stands tall. Very, very quiet man. Such a humorous person, jolly person, but man with vision. My story, I don't want to talk much. You should listen to him. Very enterprising personality. You interact with him, you will get really inspired. Cycle of presentation, so you could do. அவர்களுக்கான <laughs> But he's able to spend this much of time with us, I think, because he loves this soil. He has this foundation here. Of course, I think there's a foundation, but this fairness of his stay here has done a lot good to him. And he would, uh, any word he would say, to say that with his fingers and say, I congratulate the entire uh, history and his team for inviting him. And that is one of his celebrations. Personalities of this kind and the program that we had on the 6th of this month, I'm sure we will be reading some messages to the rest of the departments as you call our system in St. Joseph College. It is so much that we take off. May God bless all of us. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Highlighting the pride of our esteemed chief guest and unity of our Joseph family resonated deeply and it was me truly meaningful. Thank you, Father. Now, I invite Dr. Araki Sami Rajasekar to give a short intro on chief guest. Dr. Good evening, everybody. Paran the Kalati, Paramaki Kundum, Nigan Kalati, Parvi to Kundum, Yabil Kalaturke, Parvi Amit to Kundum, Payani Padi, Walti Kana Sariana Valley. In the Chutuki theatre, from Walti in Parvi, Nuruka Maha, Pitamitu, Munavana Urati, Yetu Ripari, Mamma the Serif in the letter. Penny in Dave Logistic Private Limited, Nirunathin Talibur, Munaver, yes, Savior Bhutra Avarkal. Entrepreneurial epitome, a legendary leader who serves us laid of her meaning, a role model for faith, self confidence, hard work, and perseverance, is none other than our chief guest, Dr. Yes, Savior Bhutra. Chairman of Peru Logistics Private Limited, widely recognized as the dying of the Indian logistic industry, who through his transformational and pioneering leadership continues to spearhead innovations, confirming and adopting global best practices in the Indian context 
across every industry he undertakes. The testimony of the accomplishments of 75 year old commerce department can be shrunk within a line starting our illustrious alumnus, is Dr. S. Zeevan Bhutto. Down the lane, his success journey started as become student of St. Joseph's College from 1975 to 78, Master of Business Administration from University of Madras, conferred with degree of Doctor of Literature by the Board of Management, um, by Wales Institute of Science, Technology, and Advanced Studies. He served as Professor of Commerce at Loyola College, Chennai, slowly ventured into logistic business and emulated as entrepreneur in 1984 in cargo handling facilities, starting Indo and Aconium for Indian development and integrated logistic company in the year 2016, India joined hands with Kerry Logistic China to expand its network worldwide and thus having cumulative global network of more than 65 countries, enabling the group to be the leader in the Asia Pacific region. Kerry India Logistic Limited now has an experience of almost four decades with 48,000 plus employee strength across India. It serves as one of the largest and the only company to have all service under one roof. Custom source agent, transportation, project logistics, international freight forwarding, warehousing, container, freight station, inland container, depot, air freight station, supply chain management, free trade warehousing zone, less than container, load consolidation, shipping agency, and Yashi chartering, including last mile connectivity through express cargo vertical for courier parcels. Kerry Intel was issued the first license in the private sector to set up air freight station near Chennai, India's first private air freight station to facilitate cargo transportation. One of the first companies to have received the authorized economic operator status by the government of India and first private company to be bestowed the prestigious certificate of merit by World Customs Organization for steadfastness and exceptional services to the logistic industry. In addition, Dr. Brito Services, Chairman of SL Group of Hotels and Resorts, Managing Director of Yenur Cargo Container Terminal Private Limited, Managing Director of BSV Shipping Agencies Private Limited, Chairman and Anchor Minister of Primer Personal Management Private Limited, Chairman How Do You Do Ventures Private Limited, a social media mobile app. He is also the founder chairman of St. Britos Academy, CBSE, St. Britos Matriculation Higher Secondary School, and St. Britos College of Logistics. In 2019, he sponsored a complex adjust adjacent to St. Mary's Higher Secondary School in Madurai. That same year, he was presented an honorary degree by Wengar and for his contribution to education. In a nutshell, through his business acumen, Dr. Britton ventured successfully into sectors of education, advanced information technology, hospitality industry, with hotels and resorts, manufacturing industry, media field through serial and future film production. Dr. Brito made his debut as a film producer with Master in 2020, marking his fourth collaboration with Vijay Running Series with Sindhu Pandi, um, Rasigan, and Dave. In fact, during the pandemic, the bold and sustained steps, the movie Master created history by being the only film to be released in screens, thereby giving a new life to all theaters and the entertainment industry. Dr. Bitto created and structured the logistic education in India through his own content and syllabus, creating a concert, consortium of global knowledge with plans and a way to establish the logistics universities in two years' time. As an extended CSR, 
um, he has instituted an NGO where he has been adopting villages, transforming them to be socio-economic independent communities. He has been bestowed with numerous multilateral, national, and international awards consistently over the years, winning best satisfactory awards and certificate of appreciation from the group of several multinational corporates in appreciation of the total logistics services offered with the dual honorary doctorates conferred upon him for his excellence in logistics sector, education, and CSR. Dr. Sivya Bito is the recipient of the Martin Service Provider Award conferred upon Ferry into Logistics at the Maritime Excellence Achievers event conducted during the third global Maritime India Summit organized by Ministry of Ports, Shipping and Waterways, Government of India, held at Mumbai in 2021. He also received the Business Leader and Visionary of the Decade Award as well. இனிமையும் கனிவும் நிறைந்த இடத்திற்கு சொந்தக்கார வித் பினிஃபிட்ஸ் ஆஃப் சக்சஸ் அஸ் இஸ் கிரோம் ஹி நெவர் சீசஸ் டு இனோவேட் அண்ட் கண்டினியூஸ் பிரிங்கிங் டு த ஃபோர் ஃப்ரெண்ட் பைனியரிங் விக்டரிஸ் இன் எவ்ரி திங் ஹி டஸ் வித் அ சென்ஸ் ஆஃப் ஹியூமிலிட்டி அண்ட் ஆல்வேஸ் கிராட்டிடியூட் டு அல்மைட்டி அண்ட் ஹிஸ் பேரண்ட்ஸ் வித் அ கிரேட் குளோபல் விஷன் டாக்டர் பிரிட்டோ is always a legend beyond the horizon your presence is a great honor and may i request you sir to enlighten us with your words of wisdom i kindly request all the dignitaries on the stage to stand up for the engagement of this stage As said by Aristotle, excellence is never an accident. It is always the result of our intention, sincere effort, and intelligent execution. It represents the wise choice of many alternative determinants of destiny. Here is a short video illustrating the vision of Dr. Xavier Vito. and cloud industries logistics requirement of the logistics since 1984 under the exemplary leadership of Dr. Xavier Victor we are to be the most trusted effective logistics service provider contributing significantly to the make in India and the end of the future of the world one of the first and better companies in India with the most greatest of the world logistics services under one year logistics network stretches across 65 countries with 560 offices having more than 38,000 employees and more than 75 million square feet of warehouse across the globe. Uh, um, customs house agent with the best CHO award for the last 10 consecutive years and the best private logistics company to be awarded the certificate of merit by World Customs Organization. 
transportation of consumer rights, and OBC cargo and LCL loads. Transshipment air cargo clearance, OFS, again, goes to the crime facility in the country as a big step to lease, located prominently in the Chennai Bangalore Highway, where UAVs are moved from airport to ICE for direct delivery. Low cost container for station in the Chennai, Pittsburgh, and Mingo. Inland container with and have been approved with state of the art facilities. International freight forwarding, sea and air freight services, including cargo consolidation and air chartering. Exclusive contracts with many major airlines and shipping lines of the most effective transportation of cargoes around the world. Now, we have specialized project cargo handling. Into on logistics support with vast experience in handling major corporate projects. LCL, LCL offers an expert consolidation, offering cost effective services with customized solutions. Plan India, now for more than 3.0 warehouses hosting 13,500 companies with efficient WMS and SAP systems offering just in time inventory management. Three trade warehousing zone and the SEZ is a deemed foreign territory where three convertible foreign currency for transactions provides various financial and revenue benefits, offering widespread and value addition services. Integrated trade chain logistics comprising of refrigerated warehousing and customized green storage solutions. Shipping urgency, chartering, partner with Ferry Group, EACC, and ECL Line, offering vessel chartering services with dedicated train lines for local bulk, project logistics, and container fuel shipments. Express logistics, cargo and parcel services, the line ferry service solutions for e commerce, B2B, and B2C segments. Very unbed, equally committed to its corporate social responsibility. Seek Foundation was instituted and their bringing consciousness to its basic health, education, and empowerment to every citizen. So, the Hebrew Institution is dedicated to its imparting quality education to the latest educational systems and technologies. Collaboration with the Rola Institute of Business Administration, Nima, fast creating innovative steps are created to attack skilling and developing skilled manpower in the field of logistics and supply chain management. Very India has been bestowed with numerous national and international awards from customs, government, customers, and trade roads. It is very leading the world into the future of global logistics with its competent, competitive, and comprehensive service. Give a warm welcome to such a prominent person among us. Now, I invite Dr. Jayu Bhikkhan, our Ministry's alumnus and chairman, Kerry Indian Logistics Prize for the Chennai, to deliver the engagement lecture for the academic year 2024 on the topic Logistics Shaping Future Business and Making At the outset, I thank Almighty and my parents for this uh, wonderful day. My happy congratulations to Commerce Department for 75 and 50. 
it is not so easy to have a, such a beautiful a meaningful fabulous and wonderful journey because i am also one of the past students of commerce department for the rector for the principal for the secretary head of the department and professors and retired professors and the staff of the entire commerce department and my dear students it is my real pleasure and honor to be part of this important celebrations and today st joseph stands tall it is because of the quality it is because of the values they import to all the angsters i am thankful to the management in fact uh, had other department professor was telling that they have been chasing for me for the last 3 months of course i have been i mean logistics is a business where you need lot of travel i have been going around and that is the reason i mean really i wanted to come back and speak to the students and at least now i have this opportunity to come here and to meet you all and it is again my good opportunity to come to my old college whenever i get into this college there is always an emotional feeling when i came in i started remembering because uh, again this endowment lecture is on on account of uh, retired professors it's a wonderful thing but for those professors i may not be standing before you all so when i walked in in you know, those days when my pro professor mr vellu with a big cigar in his hand and white and white walking around the corridors of commerce department and of course father valapuli always running around chasing us all into the classes and uh, i had the head of the department uh, mr dennis who used to teach us and used to start banking that is banking class i also remembered about our organizational behavior class one lecturer and we used to have three doors and i used to always sit in the last bench sneaking out of the last door when he is when he was seriously teaching about organizational behavior and so on so it was a wonderful experience i always uh, you know think i should come back to the college and again to go through this wonderful experience because those days we were all under pressure that we have to prove ourselves we have to move around and get on to the next stage and so on so that was a wonderful feeling even today and lasting memories every building i used to go on some sometime when i come here whenever i get an opportunity to speak uh, in the college or in the department i go and stand and start remembering so many things you know you are all fortunate i should say to study in jesuit institutions when there are uh, there are many institutions but personally i have been trained and i studied in all the jesuit institutions as father said i come from a small town devagotai of course my mother was a teacher my father was a clerk they couldn't give you give us all comforts but then they really wanted to give us the best possible education and that's it since and as father said i was a very troublesome boy that's why my mother put me into the boat school in dindical san maris i was able to slowly change myself but all along i studied in tamil medium i must say that st joseph completely transformed me but for st joseph it would have been difficult for me to even to speak to you today in english because 
having studied in Tamil medium and coming to St. Joseph's College. There, were, there was a lot of humiliations because the students coming from Campion School are all types of English schools, you know. They ignore us. We, we were called village students and we were called fellows they don't know English, Tamilians, or so many things. So we were all different group. And English, English speaking boys are different groups. And then I was feeling very bad. I went to my, my eldest brother, Father Alphonse was here. I went and told him it is better that I get out of this because I know English is going to be difficult for me. And all along I was in Tamil medium. Then, you know, every day I go and uh, sit in his room, started, uh, you know, weeping and all that. Then finally he told me, read small, small books. I think slowly you can, uh, you know, get on to it. And I was, uh, you know, in school, I was a district football player. I love, I was passionate towards football. So I really wanted to join St. Jesus' team. And then I decided either this way I go or that way. Then he told me every day I have to go to library, a library, beautiful library, and two hours, keep the dictionary with me, and, you know, Times of India, Newsweek, all the magazines I take over, and read every sentence uh, along with the dictionary and started developing the phrases of English. And then the pronunciation was absolutely, was difficult for me. I used to say, you know... Uh, Pant, I used to say fant. Bank, I'd say pank. So, you know, coming from there, what I you know, this Tamil and English, you know, mixing together, I was Sariya Varad. Then I just got hold of small uh, radio, and uh, those days, even now, I think, around 6.30 in the morning, we used to have the BBC News. To, cor to correct my pronunciation, I started listening that uh, news every day without fail for about 15 minutes. And within me, I challenged, the boys come from the English school and also from Campion School, all the schools, they were all doing a lot of uh, debates in English. And I decided and determined before leaving this college, I will definitely get the prize for English debate and I got it. You know, that is because of the positive attitude which I could imbibe from such a great Jesuit priest. If you have, if you are positive, you see invisible and you feel intangible and you can do impossible. That is why it is said that you need to be having positive attitude all the time towards anything. When you approach, I can do it, I will do it. And if, when you approach with the kind of reluctance and negative uh, approach, yes, you will never be successful. For me, any risk when I approach, I say, yes, I will win. Maybe in some places I fail, I don't mind. That is the kind of uh, thing I had in this uh, college. But one thing I have to share with you, having started my business, fathers always taught me that I have to give back to the society. I'm the most satisfied person today. It is not because I earned money, but I could give back to my alma mater. I could give back to my educational institution wherein I studied and particularly for Jesuit institution. What I am today, it is because of Jesuit priests and Jesuit institutions, the kind of values they taught me. Till today, I follow in my business. That is why you would have seen, out of 6,000 companies we got, International Customs Award and Certificate of Merit for Compliance, Steadfastness. What else I could pay back to my institutions? This is what, my dear students, it is not that you get a rank. It is not that you go into kind of a business and make money. But then 
what is the quality of money you have made? Give back to the society, more than that, to the institutions. When you see Karmatur College, I built and gave them the stadium. And of course, in Sargani, where my father studied, was a small school. I built the plus one and plus two uh, classrooms. And of course, the, uh, the church, which is being managed by in Oreo, Jesuit priest, I could do the best. And then in uh, Deep Ruto School in Devakote, Father Tagur was my warden that time. I could build a, 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 a state, I mean, a hall, big hall in the name of Father Tagur. And then in St. Mary's Madurai, in the name of my eldest brother and Father Alphonse and Melchior, I could build an independent building. And Dindigal St. Mary is where I did my, uh, you know, 8th to 11th. I could put up an independent building in my name. And then, of course, a beautiful stadium in Liba in Chennai, uh, Dr. Xavier Brito Hall. It is not for uh, boasting myself I am telling this. You know, I always say, you work and live for success, you become a master. But if you live and work for satisfaction, you become the legend. And satisfied life is much better than successful life because your success is measured by others. But satisfaction is measured by heart and soul and mind. Because we come with nothing, go with nothing. In between, we worry for everything. That is the status of life. <laughs> yes, let me come to my endowment lecture. Having said that, I don't know how many of you know about logistics, so much is talked about, particularly after pandemic. Now we we are, we are after you know the last four five years a lot of changes are taking place. There is a dynamism, excellence in logistics, and from prime minister to every other state, they are talking about how to develop this uh, supply chain because there was a huge disruption of supply chain management during pandemic period. And yes, for trade, commerce, and industry, the lifeline and the backbone is only the logistic industries. To make it very clear, the critical factors of logistics is your road, rail, ship, aviation, warehousing, everything is included today in logistics solutions management. You know, today, you talk about the size of the economy, GDP level. US is number one with almost $27 trillion. Number two is China, with $17.7 .7 trillion. And third, of course, uh, you know, this then comes uh, Germany with $4.4 .4 trillion. And then Japan, $4.2 trillion. And I'm really happy to say, as Prime Minister had said, India has, from the seventh place, now we have moved into the fifth place. When I say fifth place, we are in $3.7 trillion. Then how are we going to achieve this $5 trillion it has already it has already, it has been already projected that the country will reach 5 trillion dollars by 2027 if that is so is it possible that is the crux of this how this 5 trillion dollar with logistics excellence and what is going to be the uh, major role to be played by logistic industries to tell you frankly, this country has got so much of potential because of three Ds. 
One is demand. One is demand. One is demography. And number three is democracy. This $5 trillion achievement is possible because we have started having strong financial foundation. And a very strong domestic demand because of the population. You know, we have already crossed Chinese population. 1.41 billion. A strong domestic and then dynamic ecosystem. And India has got to be one of the highest high saving interest rate. And above all, today, in few years' time, India will supply labor to the world. We have 25% incremental workforce to the world. That is the reason why for India, the GDP has been projected at 6.3, whereas the global average is only 2.9%. And that is, we have, it's a commendable projection as far as I am concerned. Now, having this ambition, how are we going to drive this to make it? And that's where the country has to look for or do something different. The country has to become a leading manufacturing hub. In recent days, we would have read a lot of manufacturing industries are getting shifted from South Africa, Japan, South Korea, Japan, China, US, everywhere. Now it has become a very potential destination for those countries. There is a lot of shift in manufacturing industries. So it has to become a leading manufacturing hub. Number two, India has to become an exporting country. See, in the global exports, India is one or two percent today, which is very, very negligible. Whereas China is more than 39 percent is we are being exported. So India has to become an export. That's why they have fixed a target of almost $1 trillion export in 2028. And that is also possible. The third important thing which has to be done is the growth and the excellence of logistics chain. This is where I tell you frankly, our prime minister came up with a lot of slogans. Those days, I think it's all beautiful slogans. But slowly, I am seeing that these slogans are becoming solutions. You have heard Make in India to bring all overseas foreign multinational industries into India, Make in India, Digital India, Skill India, Startup India, and so on, and Infra India. And that's true that because whatever policies which are made are all towards this. And understanding the importance of logistics, I tell you frankly, how logistics is important. You know, India, the logistics cost is one of the highest in the world. When the world average is about 8 to 9% of your GDP, now India it is estimated 13 to 14% of the GDP. If you could make 1% saving in your logistics cost, it will automatically go to your $5 trillion. That is why this industry was $190 billion in a few years back. And 2023, surprise to note, we are in 435 billion size of industry, log logistic industry. And it is projected in five years' time, we will reach $635, $650 billion. And we ourselves are going to, you know, contribute more than a trillion dollar. In that case, achieving $5 trillion by 2027 is not a problem. That is why our finance minister in the region, in, in the recent budget session, she told, Father, we are very ambitious. Beyond 2020, uh, 2030, we will achieve $7 trillion. Yes, 
we are marching towards that. That is why they announced Gati Sakti program. All these things you must know that. There are a lot of things are happening in the economy, Indian economy. I'm proud of it. You know why? I had seen the most conventional period of this economy in this country. And I had seen the medieval period of this country. And I'm very fortunate to see the digital period of this country and economy, very advanced, wherein I could easily watch what kind of changes have taken place in the last four decades, and particularly in the last five years. We have gained the complete momentum today compared to many of the countries. And that is the reason why this Gati Sakti program is a wonderful program. I, I think, I mean, our Prime Minister has talked about it many times, which is nothing but a master plan for this country for multi-model connectivity from a centralite portal, which means a marvelous job has been done Whichever ministries which are doing infra and other areas, there are 16 ministries, because before, to get a license of a CFS, I had to go to five ministries, railway ministry, then I had to go to CWC, then I have to go to uh, you know finance ministry, commerce ministry, I personally had seen it. But whereas now, 16 ministries have been combined in such a way that you have a single platform for any, any, any organization coming into the country to have a better window of uh, you know, getting back the, the necessary permissions. So if you take it that way, that is the reason why they created national logistics policy to regulate the entire logistics of this country. And the beautiful program which they have, ULIP, a unique interface logistics program wherein the Gati Sakti and your logistic, national logistics policy become the key component. So the reducing the procedural aspects and uh, make, uh, you know, we call it as ease of doing. The ease of doing is very important. If you go to Singapore, if you go to Dubai, everything is done in 24 hours or 48 hours. This country, we were to, it, they were taking almost a week and so on. There is a tremendous development and the lead time has been completely controlled and reduced. We have come to the level where we are even surpassing UK and USA in terms of sanctioning and getting the procedures, procedures shortened. So this portal, which has been created in the last couple of years, 2021, it was Gati Sakti program, centralized portal, 2022, is the national logistics to regulate the entire logistics. And 2024, they are now combining everything. And that is the reason why this industry, you know, uh, you know, the World Bank, uh, the portal, we call it as a World Bank Log uh, Logistics Performance Index. A couple of years back, we were in the 40, 44th place among all the countries. Today, we have moved up in the short possible time, six places. We have come to 38 position in terms of performance, logistics performance. It is because of all the reforms that are happening in this uh, particular area. That is the reason why I strongly believe this logistics development and growth and excellence is going to contribute to the GDP. And achieving $5 trillion economy is not going to be a problem. And by achieving the $5 trillion economy, where are we moving? Where are we moving? You listen to me now. Where are we moving? I said first, US, $27 trillion. I said second, China, $17.7 trillion. And third, I said Germany, 4.4 trillion. And fifth, I mean, fourth, I said Japan, 4.2 trillion. Then when you do 5 trillion, where will go? So you will definitely achieve in 2027, a 5 trillion economy, and we are becoming manufacturing hub. We are becoming export economy. And above all, the supply chain 
is really getting upgraded, particularly in the technology area, which you all know, and uh, which is you know uh, artificial in intelligence, blockchain, and then Internet of Things. There are so many technological developments. The digitalization is happening in this area, thereby. As a backbone of this country, this industry is going to contribute to even seven trillion economy very soon. And that is the reason why it is said in, in another two years time, this logistic industry is going to create employment opportunity for 10 million people. And this is one area which was completely ignored before. That is why my vision is to create a university of logistics. I have structured the syllabus based on the various job opportunities and with the humanities included, it becomes BBA logistics and MBA logistics, thereby it becomes a full stream of course. And even today our industry requires a lot of skilled people. We find it very difficult because people come, we train them for a couple of years, then only they start working. We need practical and theoretical orientation in logistic industry. That is how I have structured my syllabus. And that will be a forerunner to manage the skilled people for this important industry. Dear, dear students, to conclude, as you have seen, this is what my vision was three, uh, three decades before. And I had the vision that this country has got the potential to move forward. One day, all multinational companies will come into India and look for a different type of all-inclusive services. So from custom broker, as you would have seen, and I developed all the allied services of logistics. That is the reason why our company is one of the very few companies in India to offer all the logistic services in a single platform. When I say a single platform, the kind of comprehensive and competitive and competent service that could be given by Kerry and Dave, only very few can give uh, in India. That is one of the reasons why in the last two years, we have grown fast. Any, any multinational company coming to us, whatever service you want, you give. This, this is one of the reasons why we could also reduce the logistics of, because we don't have a middleman. And we become competitive and thereby we are able to win many of the contracts. So on this day, I must tell that whatever it is, wherever you are, you have to have all, all the time track your thoughts. Because as you know, the thoughts become words and the words become your action and everything has to be positive. And the action becomes a behavior. And the behavior becomes the habit. And what I have learned from Jesuits and Jesuit institution have made to be compliant oriented, to be honest, to have the highest integrity in the field of logistics. And so that's why I said success is not miracle, or is, it is not mysterious. It is, the, it is natural consequence of your good habits. And if only you have good habits, you be natural. When you are natural, automatically you, you have a passion. When you have the passion for anything, you will enjoy doing it, even your studies. Whenever you take a book, whenever you read, oh my God, I have my exam and I am compelled to read and uh, you know study in order to write the exam. If you do that, you will never come up. I, you will never do well. What you need to do is, yes, I enjoy studying. The passion in anything, you should, if you develop a passion, that's why it is said, if you want to be successful, you should plan. I give you three P's. Plan, prepare, and perform. This is applicable for business and also for your academic qualification. Plan, tell me, plan, 
prepare and perform. And for that, what do you require? You require passion, passion, number two, uh, passion, I could say, what else? Uh, perseverance and uh, also purpose, purpose, passion, and perseverance. And uh, if you have a strong purpose in your life to succeed, you don't have to be pushed. Your vision and the purpose will be will automatically push you to the right destination. So I only request all of you to have a strong purpose in life and strong passion in your life and complete perseverance. Never give up. Never give up. How many times I failed? How many times people have been backstabbed? How many times I have been cheated? Again, again and again I fall. But then I never give up. I tell, I have, I have come from nothing. I have just with 20,000 rupees. With about uh, five people, I started this organization. If I go back also, I don't worry. But if I have to do it, I will do it with my full heart. And I will do it with my full passion. And I, I, I could do that because of this. So please remember your background or your family's richness or anybody else's help need, need not drive you. You should always feel that I can do it. And that's why with, the, with, the, with these words, I would like to conclude. Past is always a lesson. So many people are anxious all the time or depressed. It is because they are thinking about the past. I had not performed well in the last test. That should never get reflected in the next area. I have not got a good job. No, you keep trying. Then you will always get a good job. So it has to be there. And most of the times I find today, youngsters are anxious. If you are anxious, then you cannot create a good future. That is why the past is a lesson and the future is the hope. And I always say, hope is nothing but, nothing but H is hold, O is on, P is problem, and E is ends. Hold on, problem ends. And I tell you, the present is the gift. Make use of it. You always continue to create opportunities. Never wait for the opportunities. And you can also do it, and you will do it. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Your in insights on college memories, domestic education, and the role of literature were truly enlightening. Your journey emphasizing a positive attitude that makes us invisible, intangible, and impossible visible left a lasting impression. Add, additionally, your impactful thoughts on logistics as the lifeblood of industries and optimism about achieving the $5 trillion marked by 2027 through three Ds, your acknowledgement of initiatives like Make in India, Digital India, and Gandhi Shakti program highlighted the growth potential. Thank you, sir, for sharing your incident and contributing to our understanding. We are truly honored to have such a person as our chief guest. Definitely, according to our words, we will make our passion. Thank you, sir. Now, it's time to have an interaction with our chief guest. I request the students to come forward and ask questions and bring more insights and knowledge. Come forward. How do you get any good one? Sir, my name is Sri Arish, sir. Sir, what was the most significant component that you got from our college which made you to the realm of this stage, sir? Your quality life today, you are 
most important. I was a naughty boy. <laughs> no, see one thing. Whatever opportunity I got in the college, including co-curricular activities, I participate in everything, whether it is drama or elocution contest or essay writing, and I used to sing also. So everything I participated, because of this, you know, I got the self-confidence. And for you to be successful in anything, you need self-confidence. So in the college, apart from your studies, you participate in everything and you will definitely come to know your latent talents and that will give you so much of confidence in anything. Then may I ask another question, sir? Sir, and recently, recently I've been hearing that logistics is one of the most important business that develops our GDP and economy, sir. All my parents as well as all my professors were speaking about this, sir. And I come to know about this logistic business, sir. So what is the most important basic need that for to enrich logistic business? See, as it is, there is no such a graduation or a post-graduation exclusively for logistics. That's what I was telling. I have almost created. Now I have a collaboration with the Loyola Institute of Business Administration. Probably you can come there. We have now made a one-year course uh, along with them now with the faculty, practical faculty, as well as it is from humanities, regular academic professors. Uh, you know, we have made it more uh, subjects. So now we have made it as one-year course on logistics on various subjects. In two years' time, we are trying to make it as full-fledged graduation as well as post-graduation. Otherwise also, you can join one of the logistics company, be a training for a year, automatically because the areas are wide open. Now, there are plenty of areas where you can see the logistic ad uh, industry's advantages. In the IT industry, it takes four or five years to earn a particular amount of salary. Yes, but in logistics, in a couple of years, you prove you make more than an IT industry guy. Because it is all depends on what you prove, how you perform, what you have executed. And that is possible in logistics. Thank you so much. Good evening, sir. I'm Mohan Kapoor from Second Book of Munis. Uh, my question is that uh, what challenges or hindrances do you think India will face in future uh, to develop its uh, logistics infrastructure? Actually, I never had any infrastructure. First of all, I never had my own house. Okay. So, creating infrastructure, see, those days, you know, banks do not give money for me. Well, now, nowadays, you know, everybody wants to do business in others' money. You know, even today, our government is uh, having a lot of strategies for startups. And India is the third biggest destination for startup companies in the world. Also, now government is encouraging MSME. You have a lot of loans and other things. In logistics, one area where entrepreneurs can come up. There are small, small, like, for example, you buy five trailers. You become an entrepreneur and owner of transports, you see. So, this field has got a lot of challenges. But once you understand how to approach it, there is no challenge. That's why I always say, if you don't have challenges, you don't grow. And it is important as a student, you have to always challenge your limits. I have been challenging my limits. That's why I became more innovative. Why I have to state this? I need to do something else. According to the tailor-made situation of my country, this is where I started thinking some of the innovative areas. Because I got into innovative areas, you see, once you go past and you have only very few competition at the top, and when you have very few competition, automatically you move fast. So first, my, 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 my vision was to create all logistic services to develop myself to go to that level. Once I had gone to that level, now I have eliminated many of the competitors. So you should never fight with the cutthroat competition. That is not business ethics, according to me. You have to face them in a the right format with your own innovative and proactiveness. So challenges you need and overcoming the challenges will make your life meaningful. Thank you, sir.
Good evening, sir. It's an immense pleasure for me to communicate with you, and I'm Mr. from Second Bcom Honors. My question for you is: uh, Does AI have a positive or a negative impact on logistic industries? Which one? That's AI, it. artificial intelligence. Yeah. 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 is now moving to artificial intelligence. In fact, we really have to have artificial intelligence and robotics. As I've seen in uh, Hong Kong. One of the finest warehouses, it is a totally unmanned station, which means with the system and the robotics, even at the height of 32 feet, cargo could be picked up and distributed. So artificial intelligence will speed up your entire work. Number two, you become efficient. Of course, it could displace some employment. That is a possibility. That's why in our country, they are thinking how far we can go for artificial intelligence because it has got that problem also. Artificial intelligence, one way or other, it has to come if you really want to compete with other countries in the world. Thank you. Good evening, sir. Sir, I'm Jayashree from Third Week of Honors. How will you describe your one day life as a chairman? Huh? Your one day life as a chairman. Yeah. How will you describe it? One day life as a chairman. One day life as a chairman. Oh, yes. I never feel that uh, I'm a businessman. Huh? And the, as Pavel said, I keep playing around because I take even my business as, as easy as possible. And uh, of course, I have a lot of travel. For example, when we before I went to Dubai, from Dubai, I flew to uh, Delhi, came back, I went to Bangalore, and now I'm here. See, there is so much of travel. But one thing you must know that if you love the job, for me, one day is one hour. You understand? So if you don't love the job, uh, again, if you are not passionate, passionate about your job, then even one day will become one year. So that is the reason why, for me, of course, this is one of the most tiring jobs. It is not only mental, it is also physical. And you have to keep on thinking, keep on moving, keep on running. But uh, by God's grace, I have that energy and spirit to keep running. I always tell my people, give me some sort of a backseat so that I could always concentrate on this uh, you know, education side. But still, the Puliwal Purcha Kada, logistics, Buddha, the Kanchal. I'm here, I will do I as a lover of this field, you know, you know, you know, you know, you know, you 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 See, Blockchain has become very important, particularly for the shipping companies, because the uh, the scale of operations have gone up so much. For example, number of containers, or even the vessels. Those days we used to have, even to track the containers, the blockchain. Those days we used to have five thousand PUs uh, vessels. Today we are talking about 32,000 containers. So when you have voluminous transactions and so many other areas of operations, then you need you need blockchain and hello sir I'm Dashin from Second Um uh, from we are representing uh, colleagues to a successful businessman and film producer. Uh, we have been a successful businessman and uh, film producer. Um, generally human beings are uh, resistant to change and uh, Indian families don't uh, increase to venture in the business. What is that uh, something motivated you uh, to venture into business, particularly a logistic business? 
actually my, uh, my life is completely very strange and God's ways are very strange. Uh, can you find here and study become here, no? If only MCOM was here, I would not have gone to Chennai. Well, you, because my parents would not have sent it. And uh, I would have become an assistant professor presently. Or uh, I was writing the probationary exam. You know, my father wanted to be a banker. So I was writing. So when I went there, see, but then I never had the uh, ambition of becoming a businessman. I would say it is very accidental. It's God's providence, God's blessing. Probably sometimes God wants me, wants somebody to come up for a purpose. So today I'm able to give employment to so many people and so many things I, you know, I could do it. Probably God would have felt I should be chosen in my family. So my, my generation, whole generation, they don't know business. So there are so many things. For example, when I finished my MCOM, I had jobs from various uh, uh, companies like General Electric, Almond Milk, Usha Sales. Everywhere I go in Privy, I get my job. The worst part of it, my father wanted me to become an IAS officer all the time. So I was also going through the coaching and I was studying for it. So when I got the opportunity to start a small company as a custom broker, I worked for a shipping company one year. Then I started the custom broker job because I did not have money. In custom broker job, you can collect at once and then do the, do the clearances. That is how I used to accumulate little bit, little bit money. That money I used to invest in a trailer. Then the trailer, I go to the Maharaji, take the loan and buy more trailers. You know, it is called reinvesting, <laughs> throwing back the funds. I was plumbing out my loans. <laughs> okay. So what happened? This is a different, uh, clever way. Of, maybe my educational background helped me to have a better food and financial planning. So all that matters a lot. So the worst part of it, when I started the company, six months I was struggling. And that was the time I passed out my prelims and uh, main exam. In fact, my coach told me that you will get into IFS. IFS means Indian foreign sales. I would have been somewhere as an ambassador. So when I passed out my, when I didn't go for the interview to uh, Delhi, then I had to join Missouri. My father, uh, my father was very much upset, but then I already started, six months has gone. I already I developed a passion for, for a passion to become a businessman. So I didn't want to give up. I said, I have only done one attempt, I have got two more attempts. I will still get better marks if I am not successful in my business. After that, I never looked back. Then I became a businessman. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Hello, sir. Kishore from Vasthi sir. How do you motivate yourself and handle the problems and the hindrances in this business, sir? See, motivation gets you going. Okay. Discipline helps you to grow. And everything, self motivation is important because you will not be happy from outside. Only the happiness comes from within, you will become happy. For example, on a particular day you are stressful, you should always think, let it go. This will go off. Then let it go. When you have the attitude of let it go, you keep on motivating yourself. Don't bother about it. Thank you. Sir, good evening, sir. This is Raja. Nowadays, many minister focus on the logistics, sir, because it has effect on a GDP. Uh, so now Minimum is giving more importance for GDP. But uh, at the time of uh, 1984, how did you get the idea to start the business about logistic? Can you explain? See, at that time, the logistic business was very traditional. And uh, you had very few educated people, highly qualified people getting into it. Uh, that's the reason why, when I, because I did not have money, from 84 to 96, I was only in motorbikes. Every day, I used to be the operational man. I used to be the marketing man. I used to be the accountant and the drawing money from the bank. But I knew to, but the roads were not good. And the logistic was not, it was not logistic. They call it a shipping business or transport business, they call it. Glorified warehousing, glorified transport business. The word logistic itself came after 2000. Because I wanted to include many activities under, uh, you know, logistics. So, naturally... For me, that time was very tough because we were chasing few customers. We never had many customers. So from, uh, you know, bike talk to the bike, bike I mean, uh, client talk to the client, I started moving. Even sometimes to uh, look for a client in Bangalore, I go in an undeserved compartment, was sleeping on the newspaper because I, was, I could not afford to buy a reserve ticket, see? 
and I could not afford to stay in a small hotel also in Bangalore. So I go to the railway cloak room, take bath, change my dress, take an auto, visit the same day, eight clients come back to Bangalore station to take the Chennai Express. See, unless you are ready to sacrifice yourself, one more thing I want to tell you, I used to be handsome, huh? I used to have long hair and all that. So, I, in St. Joseph's also one Brahmin girl loved me. <laughs> that time, that time, you know, I'm telling the youngsters, you know. See, uh, that time only Holy Cross, you know. All the time uh, on Saturday and Sunday, that side only we will be moving around. And particularly, you can see me, my gang, eh? In the, uh, uh, in the Malakotela, Malakotela. Malakotela, I'm here. I'm going to put it in my chicken. And I'm I love driving in the weekend. We started. Our situation on the city. I'll marry four or five girls in Madras. I have the guts to tell them, you know, and the focus on the Nala, now love matter, the Marty Marty and a Murich Vishin Terry. You know, that is a very bad age. You get diverted. I think I'm going to have to put a lot of that. I think I'm going to have to wait for you. 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 What I'm trying to tell you is that until you achieve something in your life, you know, distance yourself from distractions. It could be film, it could be love, it could be anything else. students Real life, real life. That's very bad. I have, I have seen the shooting, you know. What they kick is most of the time is boobs. Okay. Even jumping is one small step, and then you see something marvelous. You know, if you look at the shooting, you will see uh, superheroes how they are doing it. So, what I'm telling you is that nothing is real. You should know what is your, that's why I said you should have a strong purpose in your life. If you have a strong purpose, that itself will push you. You don't have to push. See, today, in the 21st century, illiterate is not illiterate. Who is illiterate? Who cannot learn, relearn, unlearn. It is like learn, relearn, and unlearn. If you are you will become a genius. Do you understand? So, logistics is one, is after, that's what you know, you would have seen, I myself gone in for new things in logistic, innovated, and presented to the government. I have done a lot of standard operating procedures for new areas of logistics. Now it is getting, uh, becoming more comprehensive, that's all. So you need to keep on evolving something different. Be different in life. I can do it, I can, I can be different, and I, 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 I always experiment. And that has been very successful now. That is the reason why we are able to grow faster. What well, 30 years of my investment, knowledge, everything, the last 10 years, I am reaping it. And I sacrificed last 30 years. I lost my youth in the sense that one generation, if they don't um, sacrifice, you can never become a, a businessman. You can become a normal businessman, but not something different. So you, you need dedication, determination, and sacrifice. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Good afternoon, sir. I'm Adhimas from uh, Second Year Become. Uh, as I read, uh, your collaborator company, which is uh, Kerry Logistics Private Limited from China, is a public research company in Hong Kong Stock Exchange, sir. Did you have any idea to introduce uh, Kerry in the uh, public listed company in uh, NSE and BSE? In fact, rightly, you said we are marching towards that. We have fixed 2025 or 2026 with our IPO listing. Because we, we, could, we could have done it, we didn't, got it because of the pandemic two years. I mean, by this time, we would have listed. But I would like to list it only in India. And uh, we are coming to that size of listing. So that will definitely give a very big market capitalization for us today. You are a rich man. It is because of the market capitalization. According to me, 
market capitalization is a piece of paper of wealth. <laughs> so, uh, another question, please. Uh, can I give your comments on uh, profit maximization and wealth maximization as a company's chairman? For me? Sir, please give your comments on profit maximization and wealth maximization as a company's chairman. See, from a company's point of view, I mean, uh, now it is all, uh, you know, companies are becoming asset light. Listen, uh, asset light. Everything you might do depends on your maximization of profit. It is not, uh, your valuation is not, if your asset is not useful on producing profit for you, that asset is useless. So you need to get a wealth which would give you more profits. For example, I created container freight stations. It is a big asset. If that is the asset, if I treat it as a real estate, it's of no use. I have created the wealth. But those freight stations are giving you more profits today. And that will add up my maximization of profit. And that is very important for your listing. Good evening, sir. I'm Joshua from Second Becoming. So my question is, as we know that there has been a drastic change in Indian taxation system, from your viewpoint, so how has uh, GST impacted the uh, logistics industry, sir? We can tie from GST. Because it means money. <laughs> but what I'm telling you is, yes, initially it was tough for us. A lot of amendments has been done, particularly for our industry. Because, you know, GST 5% is there. Then you have 15%, 25%. So uh, most of it, we pass on to our customers, number one. Number two, we have the opportunity to take the inputs. So literally speaking, we don't suffer much because of GST. So that is the, and GST is very important because it is not, it is not used, sorry, all other countries have levied it, this GST long back. And everybody will be brought into the tax bracket. And GST is very important, and such a big country. You know, one thing you must know that. Before that, my transport trailer, to go to Bombay, it has to cross 36 check posts. And because of the standardization of taxes, but almost, you know, um, 18 taxes have been combined into GST, as you know, interstate, uh, octroi, so many, each state had several things. And logistics person, we suffered a lot because there used to be 36, uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 36 toll, and the waiting time was so much, that what leaves on Monday will not reach the next Sunday. Today, in 48 hours to 36 hours, we are reaching Bombay. Will you not call it as a biggest? You know, the more I rotate my trailers, my income is more. And also, the transport industry itself will grow. And more importantly, you should understand, the inventory staying cost. In a lorry, if the inventory, it has to go to the factory as quickly as possible to get into a final product. Suppose your inventory which has to go in the third day, if it stays in the lorry for one week, what do you call it? The huge inventory cost. It has got an element of interest, so many things. Then who has to pay? Ultimate customer. Because this, this raw material is going to get into their final product. That final product is going to be sold. And you will be paying a higher price. So GST, if you look at it in a, in a proper way, directly and indirectly, has made the logistics to grow and made the supply chain in such a way as promised seamless flow of goods. Understood? Thank you, sir. Good evening, sir. Hope you're doing well. This is Akira from First Become Honest. And my question to you is, how does how do you think corporate social responsibility amplifies the business? Yes, so, the government itself has fixed in your very high property, a profit, certain percentage has to become, it has to be spent for your social responsibility. We call it as CSR. So, every corporates now have been asked by the government of India to spend a portion of money to develop the community or the society in a different format. And apart from that, for example, we, my, my staff is because everything starts from your family within yourself and the, from the community. My own staff, I spend money for them to upgrade themselves, 
in technology, in knowledge, giving them the training or promoting to the next stage and so on. That itself is a social responsibility. Why are you looking at outside? You have so much to do within, within your family, within your relatives, within your you know, own staff. So I look at it in a different way. First, I correct my house, wherein I have so much to do. That itself is a social response. And for me, any businessman, as I think one of the sir was telling, you know, in foreign countries, many corporates, they come forward, they automatically do it. A portion of it. So every businessman should have inbuilt responsibility to spend certain amount of their profit back to the society. Only when the society grows, the country will grow. When the country grows, businessman will grow because more industries will come into the country. Thank you, sir. Good evening, sir. This is Meera from First Become Honors. You mentioned earlier in your lecture that you were excited for the digital age of India. Uh, that leads me to my question. That what, what are your thoughts on automated technology affecting transportation, uh, such as automated trucks? Or what, what, what kind of impact does that have in logistics field? See, automation uh, without driver coming in down the way, it, it's not going to happen now. But I tell you now, there is an EV revolution. Everybody is talking about alternative energy, green energy, and then no emission, okay? And, uh, you know, the next generation have to live happily. Today, so many people are having lung cancer and so many things. It is because of the pollution. It's all our collective responsibility to ensure there is, you know, this, this air is kept clean. The only way is that you have to get into electric vehicle or now, recently I saw that Toyota people have tested the water into the car and it is going to be a revolutionary process. So for me, uh, as it is automation, uh, you know, uh, uh, without truck driver and all that, with our country, you need a different infrastructure. That is not possible because we have to do a lot of other things in the development of the infrastructure side. So what will definitely come now, government is encouraging EV vehicle and we welcome it because this will, for example, this gives us, again, fuel saving and cost reduction. And my drivers are very happy to drive such vehicles. So that way, I think we have to welcome this format of automation into vehicle industry. Okay. Thank you, sir. It was a great interaction with us. Gratitude is the simplest form of joy. Thank you. Don't let the sun go down without saying thank you to someone and without admitting to himself about something that's this far now. Now, I don't like that the engineers have been skilled at skill of management studies to convince them of the ants. It has been just uh, a great honor for me to be part of this program. I stand here to extend my heartfelt gratitude to the esteemed guest, as gratitude is not only the greatest virtue, but the parent of all virtues. I thank the only potent God and the blessings of our patron Saint Joseph for leading us in the mission of educating the youth. And the question is posed by all of you this is that we uh, will educate them in a different dimension. The honor of the teachers of Western years, Professor Denis Fernandez, Professor M.P. Vendor, Professor Vira Bahu, Professor Lourdes Dusami, Reverend Dr. Anthony Paparaj, Dr. P. Joseph Reyes, who are in the angels of the Lord. May your souls rest in peace. Respect and honor, Reverend Father Francis Wallapini, Dr. Young Victor Santini, 
Professoria Santa Missoni, Dr. Charles, Dr. P. Rises Newman Silver, Dr. Miss Joseph Silver, Dr. Miss Yuvan Raj, Reverend Father Sebastian Titus, Professor Christian Marie Joseph, Reverend Dr. B. Silver Nayan, and Reverend Dr. Father John Bosco, who is here. May all these enjoy good health and peace of mind today and ever. It is hard time, and this is the last part of the program. We are patient still to complete the protocol of thanking people who are special, who are respectful, and who are here to impress our students. I happily accept all the good things towards the interest of the college and the department, my alma mater. With that great confidence, I must thank the college and the district management that molded and made me what I am today. Coming to back to the business, today's topic, the man without any text stood in front of you. He interests you. He was a guest. We could say that he is not a guest. He acknowledges that he is his homecoming. He feels very happy to be part of this program. And he's very natural and spontaneous in acknowledging all that he enjoyed. Heart to St. Jesus, with the Jesuits, from school to college, from college to business, and once again, coming back here. Look at his name, Xavier Brito, the influence of Jesuits. It has played an important role in the family. I don't know. Educator in Jesuit school, Jesuit college. He stands out with his integrity and faithfulness. He acknowledges the same wherever he goes, in all stages. Once I was watching television, he was in a cinema program. There he acknowledged it and paid tribute to all the fathers who has contributed to his growth. And that is uh, Mr. Britto. I could see one thing under the Kalindi in Manavaraka Kalindra, in the Manavaraka Kalindra, coming in Karar. What is quality? When we saw the video, I heard the question, what is quality? The answer was given in the video. What is dedication? We just admired him. He has committed to a program and he is seated without any attention on that because we all know that he is holding such a great position with a lot of money to that he really loved, but still look at him. What is hard work? He has defined with the students in anything and everything. What is integrity? What is talent? He says that he was from a village. He just started become. He doesn't know English himself. Now, what is his talent? What is faith? He also prays every day. Of course, his elder brother, Father Xavier Alphonse, uh, who I know him very closely. And you know, uh, Father, usually it tells more about him. And at the mercy of Father, uh, many people are in teaching profession and some in our own department do that. So he has inspired us leaps and bounds. Of course, all the students would uh, accept and acknowledge it. Such is the knowledge that we want to give to our children. And we wholeheartedly thank you, sir, for accepting to be with us and enriching our children with your spontaneous, not only by the words, by your presence and your uh, inspiration, sir. Thank you, sir. In management, we teach the types of leaders. One such is a transformational leader. Change in individual and change in the social system. And this is what is being imbibed by Reverend Father Victor. And every time he thinks of the college, he wants to do something new to the college. And the best witness is the, uh, the, the indoor stadium that is 
in full swing to make it ready by april that is the quality of reverend father rector father rector is a knowledgeable respectful simple humble and human person who oh, is not here i take this opportunity to thank reverend father rector the other type of leadership is paternalistic leader the leader is a parent i would think that reverend dr k m l s j the secretary of the college is like a father who speaks with concern listens with care and find the finds the need and make a timely support to the department i thank you father you can clap for our secretary yet another type of leader is a democratic leader who is a democratic leader the person who gives full freedom and ensures that everything goes well you would say a leader is a person who believes in their subordinates and that is what relevant for principal i thank for the principal for this felicitation aligning with leaders i have one more leader to tell a leader is the one who knows the way who shows the way and who goes the way it is speaking to dr rafal alexander pravin durai the hod of department of commerce the work of organizing endowment lecture is my responsibility in the department and having understood that it is a notable program the hod the hod took lead when we discussed my only suggestion was dr bilko and he was he readily accepted and nothing more i did everything was taken over by the hod and he has executed effectively and efficiently thank you sir i thank all the faculty members of the department of commerce both shift 1 and shift 2 for their involvement and exceptional contribution towards the conduct of this endowment lecture my most loved students but for you the program is not success i could see you being patient patiently listening to the address and interacting with the guest very crystal clear questions were posed by our children and that is the quality of our children so on behalf of the department we thank all you dear my dear students i thank professionally everyone who have been directly and indirectly supporting the success of this program thank you all let st joseph be with us to bless and guide in all our endeavor anilarku anaitukum nandru thank you so we sincerely applaud your gracious gratitude now now i request everyone to stand up for national anthem I request all the students to leave quietly and collect the grounds. 
to come on to the dais along with the thank you quiet manner right ஒரு <laughs> 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 